It's funny you mentioned that because obviously he was a successful musician, incredible artist, but you're right. We see a guy who never lost the core of who he was. Even to the end, he's a guy who almost had this mentality of a starving artist. So do you, how much do you think that factored into his success, that hunger that he never let go of? I don't know if he ever felt he was a success. I, I, I think I think you totally nailed it with that starving artist mentality. I think D, he was truly uh, a spokesperson for the underdog, and he 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 just I think he just was of the people. I don't think he felt like he ever crossed over. When you, I also okay. think it's it's. There's a, there's a big frustration to always be mistaken for something else, you know, and I mean the consistent uh, recurring position of his to say I'm a composer, you know, I'm none of none of the above that you label me with, I, label me with, you know, I I want to be uh, seen and, and perceived as a composer, and th this runs through his whole career, and it must be pretty frustrating, you know, if they label you with all kinds of other things. You get that vibe from him. He was anti-establishment. He was anti-commercial, and yet it, he ended up almost becoming labeled commercial, but you can tell there was almost like the, this disdain inside of him for it. Could you feel that when you're growing up around that? Could you feel that he was anti-commercial? Yeah, I, I always wonder uh, what he would have been like if he actually achieved the successes that he that he might have uh, defined as success. And I always I wonder what he would have been like if he thought he was a, an attractive person. Because if he could accomplish this much, uh, feeling like he was not <laughs> successful and he was not attractive, good lord! 